So the first thing we need to do is we need to obtain the ISO or the evaluation ISO image from Microsoft so we can build our Windows 2019 server. You can simply search for Windows Server 2019 evaluation, but I'm happy to provide you the link that I'm going to use here to get you your evaluation ISO. So if we head over to this evaluation page, we're asked for how we want to evaluate Windows Server 2019. And you also can notice that this is a 180 day license or evaluation period. So basically half a year, six months roughly. We're going to select ISO because that's what we want. And that is going to be the most versatile here. We can actually use an ISO to install Windows Server 2019 in Hyper-V, in VMware, in uh, VirtualBox, and we can even write that ISO to a DVD or a USB drive and install it on a physical server. The other two options, Azure and VHD, are both specific to Microsoft. So Azure is going to be Microsoft's cloud offering, where a VHD can work with Azure, but it's also specific to Hyper-V. But with all that being said now, we're going to just go ahead and select ISO. So we'll click continue here, and we're going to go ahead and fill out all of our information. And I'll just go ahead and put in my information here. Yeah. Let's see. We got C. I am going to be a business executive because that makes the most sense for me. And country, United States. And forgive me that I am blanking out my work email address and my work phone number. All right, and we'll just go ahead and click continue here. And now we get to select our language. Obviously, for us, we're going to be English. And then we just simply click download. Now, depending upon your network speed, you can see down here at the bottom that it is starting to download the file. Now again, depending on your network speed, this could take anywhere from 10 minutes to even a couple hours, depending on your network speed. I have a very fast connection, and you can see right now it's sitting at about five minutes is what it's gonna take. But, through the magic of video, I can make my network connection pretty much instantaneous, and we don't have to wait for this to download to happen. Once you have the ISO, you can now mount it directly to a virtual machine or you can turn it into a bootable USB drive to install Server 2019 on a physical server. We're going to mount the ISO to our virtual machine and then perform the install from there. Now I'm not going to go into the details here of how you mount a USB to either a Hyper-V or a VMware, but what I will tell you is that we have mounted the ISO onto a VMware server and we're now going to start the server up and boot and do an install through the ISO. So you can see I have my server here, Learn Server 2019 is what I've actually named it, and we're gonna go ahead and power this guy on, and what we should see shortly is a option for loading files. So now sometimes it'll tell you up here at the top that you need to press a button, other times it's just gonna boot. If it's a brand new server and there's nothing on the hard drive, it's gonna just straight boot right into the CD or the ISO. So you can see now that it's spinning, and we're gonna get right into the install here. Once we're into the beginning of the install, we're going to select our language. So here it's going to be English. And we're just click Next. And then we're going to click Install Now. Notice down here at the bottom that there is a repair mode option, a repair your computer. Now, if we had already, say, installed Windows Server 2019 and we needed to, and it got hosed, and we needed to get into the operating system and run some commands on it, that's what we would use this for repair your computer, but we're not. It's We're doing a fresh install, so we'll just do install now. It's going to start the setup, and then it's going to ask us for a product key. Don't worry here, you don't need one. <laughs> Some people see this kind of freak out and then they don't know what to do. Microsoft doesn't make it incredibly easy. Notice down here at the bottom there is a link that says I don't have a product key. Simply click that guy, and it's going to take you right on into the install. Now, notice we have two different types here. We have the Windows Server Standard Edition and Windows Server Data Center. Notice that Essentials is not here. And the reason Essentials is not here is because that is a completely different ISO altogether. 
Windows Server Standard and Windows Server Data Center editions all come on the same ISO. There's really not a whole lot of difference in the coding behind them. It's pretty much just the licensing and what you're paying for in the back end. Now the default installation is Windows Server 2019 Standard without the desktop experience. This is formerly known as Server Core. Now Server Core is a great thing to use if you don't need that graphical interface and you'll be managing the server completely remote. If you're not aware, Server Core is pretty much a graphical-less interface. If you've ever used Linux, it's pretty much what you get when you build a Linux server. You're just at a command prompt when you log into it. When you log into a Server Core installation, you're at a command prompt. You have access to the command prompt as well as PowerShell and a couple of the other small utilities, but it's very, very stripped down. The reason for this is to, one, reduce the size of the install, and two, to reduce the need for patching. Most of the Windows patches are fixing problems with the graphical interface or applications that run on the graphical interface. So by completely removing that graphical interface, you don't have as many patches every month to apply to Windows Server Core servers. For the purposes of this course, however, we're going to choose Windows Server 2019 Standard with the desktop experience. That way we can actually log into it and see it as you typically know a server. So we'll choose Standard here and we'll go ahead and click Next. And as we have to do with all Microsoft software, we've got to go ahead and accept their license terms. So we check the box and click Next. And now we're actually going to get into the crux of the installation. So it seems unlikely, but we're going to choose a custom install. One of the default options here is Upgrade. And that is typically if you already have a Windows Server, say 2012, R2, or 2016, and you want to upgrade that to Server 2019. We're doing a fresh install from scratch because we also want a little more control over it, we're going to choose custom install. Now, we only have one drive here in this server, and you can select and click next. However, if you want more control, you can take that drive and you can actually create a new partition with it. And you can create all the different partitions that you want, and then choose a particular partition that you want to install Windows Server 2019 on. For us, because this is a VM, it's a small hard drive, and there's only really one, we're just going to click it and choose next and Windows is going to do all the partitioning for us. So now Windows is going to go through and it's going to do the entire install of the Windows Server operating system and I know you don't want to sit here and watch this counter slowly count away so once again through the miracle of video editing I'm going to speed this up drastically for you so we can get it over with and we can move on to the next section. And there we have it. Windows Server 2019 is now installed for us, and it's going to go through its initial setup, which could cause the server to reboot a few more times, as you noticed, until we're finally prompted here to create the administrator password. So I'm going to go ahead and just create me a super secret password that I'm not going to tell you. And we'll click Finish. And it's going to finalize all our settings and log us into or bring us to the login screen of the server and we can simply issue in this case a control alt delete put in our super secret password and we're brought right to the desktop of our newly built server now in the next lecture we're going to go through and we're going to configure networking on our server